Next we move on to the method called deceleration where it is it involves burning of solid waste. Okay? At very high temperatures with high current in the absence of oxygen. So what happens is, see when you have solid waste here and you are burning it at high temperatures, it gives a lot of things like fly ash, sulfur dioxide and other gases. Okay. Now, a lot of waste is just burnt in no time. So the advantages of incinerators is that the first thing is you can decompose all non-biodegradable hazardous which means poisonous dangerous waste. That's wonderful isn't it? The second thing is it takes in a very short time time that it takes is very less. If manually when we do it, it will take hours together to burn and lot of gases will be going out. But here it is in a very short time. Then it also, if you see, the volume of waste is reduced or the bulk of waste is reduced to 25%. Can you imagine? That means one fourth of the waste comes out as all these gases. So it is reduced to that level. Volume is reduced. Then it can also give ashes and residue which can be recycled. Okay. So these are the advantages that we have because of incinerators. But there are disadvantages too. The disadvantages are, the first one is all this fly ash and other poisonous gases. But there is always, if there is a problem, there is a solution. So, if all these are coming out, we can always have filters here like precipitators that would absorb the fly ash and the poisonous gases and only leave, let out only the non-poisonous gases. So, that is also possible with this, okay, poisonous gases. Then the second disadvantage is that the maintenance cost and installation, both these are very high. This is about the incinerators. Next we move on to the strategies of reusing waste. This goes by the three R's. What are the three R's here? The first one would be to reduce. Okay, and the second one is to reuse, and the third one will be to recycle. Okay, so these are the three R's that we have. Now, when we come to point of reducing, what is the? How can we reduce waste? For example. The current problem is with the polythene bags. Whenever we want to go for shopping, instead of using or getting more and more polythene bags, we could replace them with cloth bags. So thereby, we are reducing a lot of waste and hazards due to plastic. The next is reuse. There are so many things like we have bottles, maybe plastic, then we have 
glass bottles, containers, all these need not be thrown away, but we can make use of them. That is, we are reusing them. Okay, then we go to the recycling. When you come to recycle, the one that we just now saw, composting, is to recycle all the waste, kitchen waste, into bio manure. That's one example of recycling. The second example is you take sugar cane. When we crush sugar cane and we crystallize sugar out of it, and then the residue that is there, it's called as bagas. Okay, this bagas yes can be used to make paper. Now paper can be made out of this waste product of sugar cane. And usually paper is made out of trees. So now we are indirectly saving trees by recycling the waste. This is a waste product of sugar cane processing and this is used to make paper so that also is another one and then the third example is biogas plants where you are recycling organic waste into fuel biogas plants in villages are used as domestic fuels and also for street lighting so it is a waste, it's a excreta of animals which are used to give you fuels. So that is recycling. So far what we saw was about the solid waste. Now we move on to liquid waste. So liquid waste meaning all the waste are generally dissolved in water. So it is waste water treatment. Why do we need this wastewater treatment? Because the waste, if you see, could be from industries, sewage, domestic sewage, and hospitals, and then food processing units. Then we have oil spills. So through all these things, we can have all these would be dissolved or mingled with water that becomes wastewater. Now this wastewater has to be treated so that we can use it again, that is recycle again and recycled water can be used for different purposes. Now this wastewater treatment is done in three phases. Okay, the first phase is called primary treatment. This is for all the solid waste. Now this primary treatment, you can have the heavy large solids can be removed. Then there are other things like lighter solids, also oil, grease. So these will settle down, this will float together with the help of screens, filters, sieves. These are removed. That's all about the primary treatment. Next we move on to the secondary treatment which is biological treatment. There are some organic waste which can be broken down. That's biodegradable. So organic waste are treated with microorganisms. Now these microorganisms would take some time 
to work on and decompose and break down the organic waste. So they work together to form something called sludge. And this sludge is heavier. So what it does is it will settle down in sludge digesters. This is what happens in the secondary treatment. Now we move on to the tertiary treatment. Sometimes in the first phase some of them can escape. In the second phase some of them can escape. But whatever has not been treated in the primary and the secondary would not go away in the tertiary treatment. Okay, what happens is the first thing that they do is they add chemicals. So when chemicals are added, that will precipitate. What do you mean by precipitate? See, when you add sour thing like lemon to curd, uh, to milk, it becomes a precipitate of curd, means it becomes heavier, the particles settle down. Like that, these fine things that are still going away from the primary and secondary would be made to settle down in the tertiary treatment. So that is by using chemicals. Then the next one is, there may be certain microorganisms themselves which are disease causing or pathogenic. So we could add something like chlorine which is a disinfectant which will kill all the pathogenic organisms. Okay. The third one is sometimes after all this, all this waste water invariably would have colors that we don't like. It will be unwanted colors and the smell also could be bad. So what we do is we add activated carbon. When activated carbon is added, it removes. This has a capacity to remove or absorb all unwanted color and odor. Color and smell. Odor means smell. So this is how this effluent treatment plant works. This treatment is called end of pipe treatment which means after going through all kinds of treatment the pollution board and pollution control board really wants to release this water before releasing it into the water body again. They want to make very sure rather when we say it is check and double check that no pathogenic organism or chemical is, play, is inside or present in the water that is recycled. So that is the purpose for end of pipe treatment and it is very very it's a very important it's, though it's a very short one it's a very important thing. Now see we take the wastewater after having been treated by all those processes that we saw earlier we have taken that from all the whatever sources may be and it is passed through an ultra filtration system. Sometimes you can have ozonized filters and so many other filtrations are happening, ultra filtration. Then this water again undergoes reverse osmosis. Now here what happens under pressure, this water which has impurities are flushed and only pure water is sent out and that pure water is reused. So the color is gone, the impurities are gone and that is called end of pipe treatment. In the activated sludge process, which is another process of wastewater treatment, we take the raw water, which means it is not treated, it too, and it is sent into the aeration tank. So you have water treated with again oxygen or air, and then it goes to the clarifier or settler where it forms a sludge okay the sludge will settle down that sludge goes into two parts one is this is called as the waste sludge so this comes down to be 
disposed, treated and disposed. Okay. And a part of it is recycled again to recycle. Okay. Now here after the sludge comes down is the treated water. So this treated water is collected whereas the sludge comes and it can go back again and one part of the sludge is disposed of. 